morning. So for most of you that receive pastor's emails, um, you'll know that the email went out at about midnight last night that you have a lay reader this morning. So no, I'm not Pastor Heitch. Um, I'm Mr. Heitch. So pastor will be coming back on uh, Friday of this week. So he asked me to step in, which I'm more than happy to do. Um, welcome everybody here. Visitors, members, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come in front of you and, and have this opportunity. So um, we're going to get started this morning with the order of service as printed in the bulletins. <clears throat> we're going to start with the invocation and the confession of sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and He's given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. We join with our opening hymn of praise, hymn 490, Love in Christ is Strong and Living. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father of lights, every good and perfect gift comes from you. Inspire us to think those things that are true and long for those things that are good, that we may always make our petitions according to your gracious will. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
I know that we had set up to dismiss children for Kingdom's kids at this time, but looking out, I don't see many children that would be dismissed for that. So we're going to go ahead and skip that announcement and go into the first lesson. Our first lesson today is taken from Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 26. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution that took place at the time of Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch speaking the words to no one except the Jews. But there were some men from Cyprus and Cyrene who came to Antioch and also began to speak to the Greeks, preaching the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a large number of people believed and turned to the Lord. A report about this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to go to Antioch. When he arrived and saw God's grace, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with devoted hearts. He was a good man who was full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a large number of people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, they met with the church and taught a large number of people. It was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. Here ends our first lesson. We continue our service by singing in unison the psalm of the day, Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Our second lesson, our epistle lesson today, is taken from the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see if they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into this world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit who confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit who does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is already in the world. You are from God, dear children, and you have overcome the false prophets because the one in you is greater than the one in the world. They are from the world. That is why they speak from a worldly perspective and the world listens to them. We are from God. The one who knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. That is how we can distinguish between the spirit of the truth and the spirit of error. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love has not known God, because God is love. This is how God's love for us was revealed. 
God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we may live through him. This is love. Not that we have loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us so much, we also should love one another. Here ends our epistle at lesson. Our verse of the day is taken from John chapter 14, 23. Alleluia, alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. If anyone loves me, he will obey my teachings. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Alleluia. I invite those that are able to please rise in respect for the gospel. We rise in respect for the holy gospel, which is taken from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Me to you, o Lord. This reading will also be our sermon text for today. As the Father has loved me, so also I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you hold on to my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have held on to my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy would be would continue to be in you and that you would be complete. This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you continue to do these things, I instruct you. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, because everything that I hear heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will endure, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. These things I am instructing you, so that you love one another. Here ends our Gospel reading. To you, O Christ. Continue by confessing our faith with, faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Here's a song called Seek the Lord from Isaiah 55.
and we will not fall away from you. Call on the Lord when he will hear. Stay in the word while he is near. God will never leave your soul. We need to stay close, well that's our goal. Again, as I mentioned before, our sermon text today is taken from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. I do tend to get somewhat nervous and talk fast, so in case we miss the gospel lesson, I'm going to go ahead and go over John chapter 15 again. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know what his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so whatever you ask in in the name of my Father will be given to you. This is my command. Love each other. Do you not agree that it's a daily struggle sometimes to maintain a positive outlook on life? The pessimist in me looks at the glass half empty. The optimist in me sometimes struggles to see the glass half full. The new person that I am in Christ looks at this cup and sees the blessings flowing over. With David in Psalm 23, we really can say, my cup runs over, and goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Today, we we listen to Jesus tell us to remain in his love. Last week, we heard Jesus tell us that we are the branches connected to him as the true vine. In these words, we hear Jesus plead with us to stay connected to him and the love that he has for us. Love is kind of a unique word. There are so many different kinds of love. In the English language, we call them love. In the Greek language, they have several words for love. We think of a mother's love that a mother might have for a child, especially on Mother's Day. Then there's the romantic kind of love, a beautiful blessing from our Lord when it follows God's plan instead of the Hollywood version. The Greek people used the word eros to describe the romantic love. They used the word philio to describe the love friends have for one another. The highest form of love, I bet most of you can guess it, agape, agape love. When this word is used in the New Testament, it takes on a higher meaning of sacrificial love, the kind of love that we know from the verse, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When Jesus tells us to stay in his love, he's speaking about the sacrificial love that led him to give his life on the cross for us. That's where we want to be 24-7. Now we talk about Jesus' love sustaining us. Nothing will sustain you more in this life than the love that Jesus has for us. How deep is that love that Jesus has for you? Our Savior tells us how deep it is in the words, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now, remain in my love. Jesus compares the love he has for you to the love that the Father has for him. Could there be any deeper, more beautiful love than that? This past week, we introduced a new song about Jesus' love to the children at the transitional shelter. Remember singing, Wide, wide as the ocean, high as the heavens above, deep, deep as the deep blue sea is my Savior's love. We cannot even begin to fathom the amount of love that Jesus has for us. And for you. Have you ever felt undeserving of someone's love? I know that I have. I know that you probably have as well. On Mother's Day, we think of our moms and how often we did not deserve their love. Jesus spoke these words to his beloved disciples who certainly did not deserve his love. 
Only a few after, hours after Jesus spoke these words, Peter, one of his closest disciples, would curse and swear that he never knew Jesus. All his disciples would run and hide like scared rabbits. They were hardly, worth of Je- hardly worthy of Jesus' love, nor are we. We could spend the rest of the morning looking back at the times, even just this past week, that we were unfaithful to the love that Jesus has shown us. Jesus gives us a strong command to stay in his love because his love is the only way that we can have forgiveness for all the times that we rebelled against him. He says, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. The Heavenly Father gave Jesus the commands to, the, to love people like you and me by living the perfect life that we could never live and by dying on the cross as an atonement for those sins. Now Jesus gives this command, really a gospel call, to stay or remain in his love. With these words, Jesus invites us to believe with all our hearts that his love for us is the best blessing that we could possibly imagine. He says this because we will be tempted by the devil to think other things in life are more important than this life. And that would be a huge tragedy. To appreciate this command of Jesus to stay in his love, I would direct a prayer in Ephesians chapter 3 that helps us appreciate what Jesus is telling us in these words. Paul offers this amazing prayer. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in my love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love surpasses knowledge that you might be filled with the measure of the fullness of God. Jesus wants you to see how wide, how long, how high, how deep is his love for you. If you were the only person in the world who had ever sinned, I still believe that Jesus would have personally given his life just for you. Such, de- such is the depth of Jesus' love. So, because of the love that Jesus has for us, Jesus is able to say that people like us, who were once enemies, are now his dear friends. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Jesus wants you to remain in the love he has for you because that is the only way that you can continue to be his friend and be close to him. You cannot hope to have Jesus as your friend because of your loyalty or your friendship. You can only have him as your friend because he loved you and was willing to give his life for you. No one will be a better friend to us than Jesus. A good friend will always be there for you. A good friend will listen to you. A good friend will even tell you their deepest secrets. Jesus is such a good friend to us Your Lord and God laid down his life for you so that you could be his friend. As your friend, he will always watch your back and protect you with his love. Romans chapter 8 says, Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who has risen, is at the right hand of God, interceding for us. Then the important question is asked, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And the answer is given. Nothing else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus, your good and faithful friend, will even tell you special secrets. He told his disciples that they were no longer servants but friends. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I have learned from my Father, I have now made known to you. Because of what Jesus said about his father, his enemies wanted to put him on the cross. It was Jesus who unveiled the depths of the father's love for us when he said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus takes the secret things that belong to him and the father and make them known to us. Deuteronomy 29.29 says, The secret things belonging to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and our children forever. How could Jesus ever take a person like me or you and call us his friends? He certainly could not find anything in us that could ever make us worthy to be his friends, as Paul confessed. I know that nothing good lives in me, 
that is in my flesh. Jesus tells us the reason why we have become his friends. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. The friendship you have with Jesus this morning and the love that you know has not the love that you know he has for you has nothing to do with you or what you have done. Jesus chose you to believe in him. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourselves. It is the gift from God, not by works, so that no man can boast. How does Jesus' love change us? This special love that Jesus has for you sustains you in this life for all eternity. It also changes you because his love bears fruit in your life. You will want to love people the way that Jesus loved you. Jesus says, I have told you this so that your joy may be complete. When you know someone loves you, doesn't it make you full of joy? It makes you want to sing for joy, sometimes. When Paul and Silas were beaten severely, thrown into a prison in Philippi, they sang hymns at midnight. The prisoners heard them singing hymns about Jesus' love for them. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he wrote this while he was a prisoner in Rome. Here is how he expressed his joy. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from this day until now. When you're around other Christians, who sees their cup of blessings overflowing in the love that Jesus has for them? They share the joy with each other in words and in songs and express the faith. Jesus commands us to stay in his love so that our joy will be full. He commands us to stay in his love because that will be the source of strength and power we need to love other people, especially our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Jesus says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. So where do I get this power and strength to love other people with the sacrificial love that Jesus has for us, this agape love? It comes from the love that Jesus has for me. He is the vine, and I am the branches. He has chosen me to bear much fruit from him. Here is how Galatians describes the fruits of the love that come from Jesus' love for you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What fruit do you want to see more of in your life from that list? Because you are so tightly connected to the love that Jesus has for you, you have the privilege of being children of your Heavenly Father. That opens the privilege of going to your Father in prayer and how Jesus wants us to go to our Father in prayer. Not because we have earned enough points to merit His favor. No, we pray, because we pray to our Father because of Jesus' love for us. Jesus offers us this assurance. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in My name. Because of this amazing close connection to Jesus' love, You will ask the Heavenly Father for things that are from Jesus and things that will draw you closer to that love. You will not ask for things that take you away from his love. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to him in prayer. Friends, your cup of blessings is running over. Jesus wants you to stay in that love. Amen. We continue our service with that verse, Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and bring a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Amen. 
we continue our service by going to our Lord in prayer with the prayer of the church and the Lord's Prayer. Heavenly Father, God of grace, you have brought us into a new and, and living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ all will be made alive. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. We marvel at the love you showed by your willingness to sacrifice your son to pay for our sins. We bow down in adoration at your mighty power, which raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, God of grace, you have filled our hearts with the resurrection joy by your victory over sin, death, and the grave. With the church of every age, we offer you unending praise, for you have crushed Satan's head and have removed our guilt. Dear Savior, we who are weary and burdened come to you for rest, knowing that because of your perfect redemption, there is now no condemnation for us. Take away our doubts and fears and daily renew in us the joy of our salvation. Holy Spirit, God of grace, you have called us by the gospel and brought us to saving faith in our risen Lord. Keep us with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. As we journey through life, make us yearn for the day when you will give eternal life to us and all believers in Christ. Now hear us, Lord, as we bring you our own private petitions. Work through us as we proclaim the saving message of the crucified and risen Jesus near and far, so that many others may hear your call, obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, and join us before the throne of our God and of the Lamb. Alleluia. For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Alleluia. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. We close our service with our final hymn, hymn 369, Beautiful Savior.
All right. Thank you so much. I think I beat the last time I did this by five minutes. So <laughs> I definitely appreciate everyone giving me the opportunity uh, to serve the Lord in this way. Um, thank you all to everyone. I know my dad sent out the email last night with some of the announcements. Um, Ray has volunteered to lead the Bible study after church today, so we will be having Bible study. And I don't think I'm missing any other announcements. So if... Um, if I am, I'm, I apologize, and, and thank you all again for the opportunity. I'll greet you in the back, and have a great Mother's Day to all of our mothers. Thank you.